budget and high end, two terms that don't really mix with each other most of the time, but sometimes they do, and maybe a product like the X870E Tomahawk from MSI might be one of those. But what would you even get if you were to spend a bit more on the higher end chipset compared to the B850? Well, you're going to find out by the end of today's video. Full disclosure, MSI did send out this motherboard for today's video. I do get to keep it and I will be using it in future content, but MSI didn't pay me to say anything in this video and I don't get to preview it before it goes live. Just so you look. So if you were to opt for an X870E motherboard, what sort of features would you expect compared to something like the B850? Well, you get a Gen 5 PCIe slot for your graphics card. So if you've got something like an RTX 5080 or 5090, maybe this is a feature that you'd be interested in. And you also get a much more stacked IO with 40 gigabit USB 4 Type-C connectors, which is mandatory for every X870E motherboard. So this is guaranteed. And there's also two chipsets with these motherboards, which guarantees a bunch of internal headers and rear IO as well. So if you use a lot of USB devices, X870E might be a good choice for you. And then again, we've got multiple Gen 5 M.2 slots, which might be helpful for a lot of you high-end gamers out there. The X870E Tomahawk features a much sleeker design compared to its predecessor, the X670E. This is a motherboard which we've had in our test bench for I'd like to say almost a year now, and it's served us quite well, and it's a very solid motherboard, but the X870E is just that much better in terms of its connectivity, which we'll go over in a minute, and its, well, looks. It has a very similar power layout with dual 8-pin EPS connectors, and under the beefy, chunky heatsink, we've got 14 phases for the V-Core, two for the SOC, and one for miscellaneous what miscellaneous is i'm not too sure but i can find out and put it on the screen for you anyways this feeds power into the am4 socket and out of the box we've got support for zen 5 ryzen 9000 series you might need a bios update if you were to go with the 9950x 3d as the bios revision on this motherboard is dated in around december but we've got a bios flash feature so that's not really a problem as it's am5 we've got socket support as well so if you wanted to upgrade your cpu two or even three years into the future you can always upgrade it, just update that BIOS and slot that CPU in. And then to the right of the socket, we've got four DDR5 slots and MSI say that you can fit up to 256 gigabytes of memory into this motherboard. Most of you gamers probably won't be getting anywhere near that and max speeds of up to 8,400 mega transfers per second. But this does vary on your internal memory controller on your CPU, so your mileage may vary here. And even then, to be honest, I'd recommend 6,000 megahertz, CL30, around that sort of speed. That's your sweet spot on A&D, as you can get a one-to-one -one ratio with the Infinity Fabric. Arguably the biggest benefit of X870E is the connectivity. And we've got three PCIe slots to choose from here. The top one is a 16X Gen 5 for your graphics card. So if you've got an Nvidia Blackwell GPU, this might be a very important feature for you. The one down from this is a 1X Gen 3 slot. This is probably fine for audio or capture cards, that sort of thing. It's not exactly the fastest slot in the world and I wouldn't put a graphics card in there. And the one below this is a Gen 4 4X slot, which is perfectly fine for stuff like 10 gigabyte NICs or an NVMe adding card. So if you needed even more storage, you could go with that. But to be honest, you probably won't need that because we've got four NVMe slots on this motherboard, two of which are directly wired to the CPU with Gen 5 speeds. One of them's a 22110 slot, so if you've got a really long SSD, that's the top one right there. And the other one is a 2280. The rest of them are Gen 4, which are wired to the chipset, and these are both 2280 slots. So if you needed a ton of NVMe drives, this motherboard's got you covered. Oh, and by the way, the top and bottom slots are easy latches and they're a totally tallest design, so that's super cool to see on this motherboard. When you're swapping SSDs, you don't even need a screwdriver, which is super cool to see for the top and bottom ones, that is. As for headers, we've got an absolute metric ton of them. There's a dedicated CPU and pump header, which is kind of standard on most motherboards now. As for the rest of the case fans, we've got six system fan headers. So yeah, that's probably enough for most PC builds out there. And for you RGB fanatics, there's three addressable RGB headers. And there's also a legacy 12 volt four pin connector as well. But if you needed even more headers, there's an easy connector, which has both an RGB and fan connector on there. So if you're absolutely stacked in your PC with both lighting and fans, 
there's always room to improve there as well. And for the rest of the connectors, we've got the front panel, which is standard on every single motherboard. And it's even got this little extender so you can hide the little ugly cables as sometimes they are ketchup and mustard, which is kind of annoying. And then there's two USB 2.0s, which is great for RGB hubs and that sort of stuff. And then there's right angled, yes, right angled, USB-C and 3.0 internal headers. You don't know how much this means to me as a PC builder, as when they're not right angled, it's an absolute nightmare to cable manage them. So MSI knows that and they've right angled them on the motherboard, which just makes cable management that much easier. And also the USB-C header can deliver 26 watts of power. So if you needed to charge some devices for your, your case, you, you can do that. Enough of the internal headers, let's go to the rear of the motherboard and to be honest, this is pretty stacked. We've got two 40 gigabit USB 4 Type-C connectors, which are absolutely great for, well, video editors and creatives. If you needed to move quite a few files between an external SSD or even from an SD card to your PC, these transfer speeds are very fast and I believe they're the same speed as Thunderbolt 4, so yeah they're, they're pretty quick and these are standard on every x870e motherboard as well also we've got slightly slower 10 gigabit usb type a and c connectors which are still plenty fast enough for most people and then we've got three usb 3.0 5 gigabit port and then we've got four of the legacy usb 2.0 ports which are perfectly fine for stuff like mice and keyboards and other wireless dongles that sort of stuff as for networking, that's covered by a Realtek 5G LAN Ethernet port. This is probably more than enough for most people out there, as most gamers won't even be saturating a single gigabit. But it is good to see, especially if you're a video editor with a NAS, you can transfer files over the network pretty quickly, and it's good to see that on a motherboard like this. Also included is Wi-Fi 7 with Bluetooth 5.4. So if you needed to use Wi-Fi or connect Bluetooth devices like controllers or headphones or something like that that's always a possibility with this board with the included antenna it's great to see a clear cmos button if you've got a bad overclock or something's just gone wrong in the bios you don't even need to open it up and jump the two pins on the board you can just hold this down for a bit and it's cleared all your bios settings which is so good to see I, i'm probably going to be using this quite a bit and then if you need to upgrade to a cpu but you don't have one to flash your bios there's a BIOS flash feature, which only requires the motherboard and power to update the BIOS, which is a great thing to see. This should be standard on every motherboard now. So it's good to see. And speaking of the BIOS, MSI have given theirs a fresh lick of paint. They've done an overhaul of the UI, especially with the, the Mag series, and I think it looks quite a bit better than the previous ones. I've used a Z790, force wi-fi and the x670e tomahawk and the ui was fine but i always preferred the rog and the aurus ones i thought they were much better but now after this i think msi are back in line we've got two bios modes we've got easy and advanced most of the meaty stuff is in advanced but under easy mode you can do quite a bit like enable expo so it's just like a one click fix and you can enable stuff like the firmware tpm which should be enabled by default for the Windows 11 stuff. Yeah, Microsoft moment, I suppose. And like most modern biases, you can use a mouse as well, which just makes it kind of easier, especially while adjusting your fan curves. And speaking of which, adjusting your fan curves is much easier than what it was before. On the Z790 and the X670E, it was like kind of laggy with the mouse most of the time, but now it seems like it's pretty smooth. So if you wanted to go in and change say okay i want to change this fan curve ever so slightly here like that it's not as laggy anymore and it's a bit more responsive it's just one of those things that just really adds to the experience you're not going to be in the bios of that much but when you are it's a much better experience and as a pc builder and a tinkerer it is nice to see but switching up to the advanced mode this is where the meat and potatoes of the bios is and you can get access to quite a bit more data and settings here the first page is the system status so you can see like all the sort of like drives that are connected we've only got one which is a crucial two terabyte nvme and you can see the the date and stuff like that the date is out of whack but yeah, that, that probably needs changing. Anyways, you can come to advance and change things like UEFI. So if you needed, 
I don't know, legacy support, you could always enable CSM. Most people don't need to enable that at all. And towards the bottom of this page is AMD overclocking. Here, you can tweak your Ryzen processor. And what I like to do is precision boost overdrive. Put that on advanced and then go to curve optimizer. Put it onto all cores negative and then i like to start off with minus 15. what this does is it essentially allows your ryzen cpu to use less power while operating at the same frequency therefore it's kind of like under vaulting in a way next we can go into overclocking here you can tweak quite a lot of memory settings and most people will just enable expo and call it a day to be honest you'd probably be fine with that but if you wanted to tweak I don't know, the U-Clock equals mem clock. That gets the most memory performance out of Ryzen processors. You can always do that. To be honest, at 6400 mega transfers, it might be a bit of a, a struggle on the 7900X, but we can always try it. And if we mess it up, there's always that clear CMOS button on the back of the motherboard to clear all of the BIOS settings. But if you truly wanted to change all of your memory settings, you can go to advanced DRAM configuration. Here you can tweak so many settings like the cast latency and all of the sub timings. So if you wanted to mess around with these, yeah, you can do, but if you know what you're doing here, you probably already know where it is in the BIOS anyway. So there is that. I'm probably just going to leave this alone now because I can't really be bothered. And then under security, there isn't really that much here that you'd need to tweak with. It's stuff like trusted computing, which is the FTPM module, which you should have enabled if you want to use Windows 11. And then the secure boot, there's no reason to keep this disabled unless if you're using legacy stuff. So most people just have that on anyway and just leave it there. And then we've got the boot menu here. You can obviously select your boot order priority. The first one should be Windows Boot Manager or whatever operating system you're using. We don't have an operating system installed right now. So it's gonna try and go to a UEFI hard disk, but it, it can't boot into anything as there's no Windows or any other operating system partition on this. But when you install Windows or your operating system, it should put the bootloader at the top of this. So you shouldn't really need to manually adjust this. It's mainly for tweakers and see if anything's gone wrong. And then last up is save and exit. You can save all of your changes here and you can do a boot override. So if you wanted to boot into a bootable USB or something like that, just for a one-off time, that's where you can go through there. You don't need to change your boot priorities or anything like that. And then lastly, we can save all of our changes and reboot. And what this will do is it will save all the settings that we've done like Expo or XMP, or if you've done any precision boost overdrive or anything like that, and you can save that and it will reboot the system. It should go straight into Windows if you've got that installed, but here it's gonna go straight back into the BIOS as we've got nothing installed. Anyways though, the BIOS experience from this motherboard is very solid and I'm pretty impressed with the improvements that MSI have done to it. It's much better than the old one and these quality of life tweaks really go a long way. So, for its £330 MSRP, which it can be found for lower, I'll have it linked in the description below with my Amazon affiliate links. So if you wanna pick it up, you can do. Anyways, I think for this price, it's an absolutely stacked motherboard and it's a relatively decent value for high-end gamers and creatives like myself. And I'm also going to switch to this motherboard in an upcoming build, so make sure you stay subscribed for that. I really cannot wait to upload this content. But if you know you're not going to be using any of the features which the X870 e Tomahawk offers, you could always go with the B850. It is lacking a few features, but if you know you're not going to use them, you can save around 90 pounds as it goes for around 250 quid. I'll also have it linked in the description, by the way. Yeah, you could go with more RAM or get a better GPU. And speaking of the GPU, if you wanted a solid graphics card to pair with either of these motherboards in a build, you can check out this one in a video up there. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next one.